Let's get started. Um, thanks, everyone. Uh, so I'm Itamar, one of the founders of Argent. Jillian uh, here is one of my co-founders. Um, the idea today is really to, to tell you how smart wallets can uh, enable better DeFi. Um, so we'll do two things. First, we'll present you how uh, Argent helps you navigate better and smart contract wallet in general to the world of DeFi. Uh, and so I will start, I'll do a demo so you can really get a feel of it. Uh, and then Jillian will explain you what's under the hood. We'll let you know when we start that part in case you want to leave and go somewhere else, but it's quite interesting too. Um, so let's start a bit about um, so some context on Argent and why we started Argent. Uh, you know, quite obvious, we looked at the, we, we started interacting with Ethereum as users. Um, we thought what would it take to get a billion people uh, use crypto, uh, and clearly we felt uh, there was too, too much friction, too many issues. Uh, to name a few, it's way too easy to lose assets. We felt there was no way a billion people would write their seed phrase on paper. I mean, we've told people for years to not write their password on a post-it. They finally get there, and then we tell them not to write a seed phrase on a piece of paper. In general, it's quite scary to transact, easy to lose a lot of money with a mistake, and interacting with dApps was, uh, was too painful. Um, so we, we thought, can we, um, can we build an experience that would feel uh, like N26, Revolut, Monzo, whatever the country you are in, so something super slick, um, but fully non-custodial. Uh, some of the features we needed to solve was about fund recovery, uh, ability to block fraudulent transactions, uh, like, like you would have with your bank, freeze your account if you lost uh, access to it, uh, trusted contact, no transaction fees, we felt people couldn't, I mean, at scale, a billion people wouldn't set a gas price uh, in their app, and also get rid of cryptic address because we don't think it's a very safe and an easy way to, uh, to interact and to send funds. So really look at all these problems and basically solve them one by one. Um, so. I think the best is that I show you how, how it looks. Uh, and really for us, it's about the fact that a smart contract wallet allows you to have programmable money. And so suddenly we can put logic in the smart contract that solve uh, most, most of this pain point. Uh, so I'll start straight away with the demo. I see more people coming. No, come in, come in, let's, uh, this is the perfect time. Okay, so let's start with the demo. You can all see that. So, uh, when we think about DeFi, we really start with the basics, which is actually you need to be able to hold funds very securely. You need to be able to move these funds. You need to be able to recover these funds. And then you start doing more fancy things around, around DeFi. So let me start. I open Arjun. It looks like a, you know, looks like a wallet um, with all the, the usual wallet stuff. But I will start by showing you uh, why we don't ask you for a seed phrase. So in our gen, when you start, we do not ask you to write down a seed phrase. We assume you can lose your private key. Julien will give more details on that. But what you define is basically guardians. And that's exactly the experience you have with your bank. When you lose your wallet, you call your bank. You say, I lost my card, freeze it, send me a new one. With Arjun, you can do the same in a fully trustless way on chain with guardians. Uh, it can be any Ethereum address. So it can be friends and family who have the Arjun app. So it's very easy to take, for them to take that role. Uh, if you are a more advanced user and you have millions of dollars, you can use a hardware wallet. You can use three hardware wallets as guardians. And then you can use a, a service, like Argent offers a service, and we can take the role of guardians. And this guardian never has your private key. It doesn't hold your funds, doesn't hold your private key, doesn't hold a, a shard of your key. It's really, he has his own key and you give him the right to take some security related action like recovery. Um, I won't show you that because then I would have to recover my wallet. It takes, uh, takes time, there's a security period. So let's start to get into the most, more fun stuff. So the usual thing I, I like to start with is let's send a die, and I go a bit quick on purpose to show how, how smooth it is, to my co-founder, Gerald. I want to send him a die, and that's the confirmation screen. Um, while I do that, I'd like someone to help me with something. If you, someone can pull out a, a wallet on their phone or their computer and just prepare a QR code for me. So I would need a Ethereum QR code for the next, uh, next part if someone can do that. So here I'm sending a die, important screen. On that screen, you do not see any Ethereum address because every user in Arjun gets a free ENS. So gerald.argen.xyz, that's his ENS. And you don't see gas. 
because we have abstracted that complexity, we actually subsidize and pay for the gas. So basically, I'm sending money like I'm sending money on Venmo, uh, very smooth, quite instant. Um, but now let's get into, uh, okay, more people. For the best part of the demo, let's send more money. So anyone got a QR code here? Okay. Let's, uh, what's your name? I know. Hi, Ruben. Oh, yeah, I know. Normally, I do someone I don't know. I know you, but that's fine. I don't know Ruben, so someone has access to my private key, and I'll send money. This is live. You see yourself. I scan your QR code. Okay? So it appears here, and I will send. I have 65 E's, so I'll send Ruben 65 E's, $12,000. Okay? So I continue. If you remember the me sending one die, that's the final screen. So send money to Ruben. You don't have an ENS. You need to download Argent. Uh, and that's his fee. Although I know you have your own ENS. Let's not get there. Um, so that's the final button. I I'm tapping on it. You are ready? So I'm sending Ruben uh, 65 ETH. What happened here is that the smart contract, and that's important. So it's not the app. It's not some fancy backend. The smart contract sees a large transfer to a person I don't trust, to an address I didn't trust. So that transfer, I could go ahead, but it would take 24 hours. I would get alerted, um, and then I have 24 hours to cancel that transfer. So even if you have my private key, you cannot take my funds. That's really the foundation of everything. It's super, super secure. And, uh, and also, I, I'm much more confident and relaxed about it because I know that if I lose my phone or if it's compromised, you cannot drain my account, and I will be able to recover my funds. So sorry, Irvin, you don't get you don't get the money. <laughs> I would cancel it. I would trust you to send it back. Um, and this, by the way, is on chain, on mainnet. It's all a lot of users. You 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 you'll be welcome to try it. Um, some other cool features, so I could say, you know what, I trust uh, Ruven, I will whitelist him, and from now I can make transfer instantly uh, of any amount uh, to Ruven. So now let's get into the more fun stuff. Um, first thing sometimes you might want to do in DeFi is to, to buy a DAI, so you know, we have integrated Kyber network, it's as easy as this, and I just bought a DAI in literally three seconds, uh, that's all it takes. Uh, but that was a simple use case. Other people have integrated DEX. Now we'll go into the finance tab and do something more complex. So we have already opened a maker CDP here. Okay, quite a few. Uh, is it a slick experience? Too many transactions? So it used to be seven transactions with their proxies, four or five. A uh, lot of issues in the process. You approve 10 to the 59th. Uh, of your die, there's a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, let, let's open a Maker CDP live, and uh, let's do that. So I want to borrow crypto with Maker. Here's some information, 20% APR, 30% liquidation penalty, nice. I'll set my collateral to five ETH, yeah. Uh, I want to borrow 109, okay, that was my wife, sorry. I review my loan. Um, I review my loan. I push on a button. I have just opened a Maker CDP. And that took me five seconds, 10 seconds. Uh, only one transaction. I think anyone can open, a Maker, open such CDP. Uh, obviously, uh, some people might want to grow their holdings with Compound. Put some die there. I'll put 50 die. And I've just opened a savings account on Argent. Uh, I don't know about you, but that's much easier than, than doing that with my bank uh, back in London. Uh, so. <laughs> So I would say that's, um, that's a demo of Argent. I think you've seen uh, most of it. There's a lot of more cool stuff we're doing, but basically it's really abstracting all the complexity. If you think about it, no more seed phrase, no more gas, no more complex approved synchronous action. You just, anyone can do it. It's not different than joining N26 or joining. Um, I did put it in do not disturb, but you cannot uh, block. Uh, if you look at the phone, it detects it, and so it still shows you the transaction, um, the notification. So basically, anyone can do it. My mom can open a CDP. Uh, there's no more. They are the zoo. They are the zoo. Awesome. They're in Berlin with my daughter, and it's an awesome city, so I get a constant feed of, of update. <laughs> so my wife has opened, no, she has uh, put her, her money in a, in a compound. She was more interested. We think CDP is much more niche uh, for obvious reason. Compound was really the big explosion where everyone, everyone wanted to uh, put money in Compound. Um, I think I'll let uh, Julien talk about the more uh, 
no, more, more interesting part. Uh, yeah. Thank you. thank you. I assume the clapping is for me, so thank you. So, <clears throat> how does the Argent Wallet work? So, basically, as you've seen, it's a mobile application that interacts with a smart contract based wallet. So, basically, what happened is that you have a key in your phone. But that key actually has no funds. It's basically act as a remote control for your real wallet, which is a smart contract on chain. So basically, when you make a transaction, your, your key will just sign an intent. And nowadays, people call it meta transactions. This is related to the blockchain. And this is, by the way, how we abstract gas. And then finally, the transaction arrives at your smart contract, which will decide if the transaction is legit. Is it really the owner of the wallet? Is the context correct? And if yes, the transaction will be processed by the wallet. So we are a smart contract based wallet and we've, we've taken a, an architecture which is a bit different than, than most people. So basically when you have an Argent wallet, what you have is a very simple contract that we call base wallet. And when I mean simple, it's uh, less than 100 lines. And then we have a set of modules and each of these modules contains a different piece of the business logic. So for example, if you want to add Guardian, you need to send a transaction to the Guardian manager module which will check that the concept is valid. Do you have, you know, is it a legit guardian? How many guardians do you have? Do you have already had that guardian and so on? Uh, all these modules accept meta transaction and actually regular transactions. And what's interesting too is that modules are shared between the different users. So basically there is one module for all the Argent users, but each Argent user as an independent, as its own uh, base wallet contract, which holds its fund and its identity. And so actually, if you see in green, that's the flow of a transaction. So when you want to interact with your wallet, actually you don't interact with the base wallet, you interact with the module. The module will verify, authorize the transaction, verify the context, and if yes, we'll instruct the base wallet to, for example, transfer your funds. Why this architecture is interesting is because actually it makes it easy to upgrade. If we want to add a new functionality to Argent, all we need to do is basically create a new module, and then users can authorize that new module. If for some reason we want to improve a functionality, we can re remove the old module and then add a new one. So it's really like plugins. You can think of features like plugin to the wallet. What's of course important is that only the owner of the wallet can add or remove a module. So we, Arjun, have no control on that. All we can say is that we can propose modules. And of course, these modules, they need to be authorized by Arjun at some point. And so they are part of what we call the Arjun registry. And then users really on their app will say, okay, I want this feature, I upgrade my wallet. And suddenly the base wallet authorizes a new module to basically interact with it. So it's, it's quite cool to, to upgrade and make the wallet evolve. And another reason why we took that road is because actually it's really easy is maybe not a good word when we speak about auditing solidity, but it's easier to audit. Smart contract, of course, is something that is scary. They tend to be long. It's easy to make mistakes. And so auditing is, of course, critical in terms of security. And having a modular architecture provides good separation of concern because you can reason about the different contract individually. You can reason about the base wallet, 100 line. You can reason about a module, which will be a few hundred lines. And you can just think about that module. So yeah, that, I'm giving in some benchmarks. So yeah, a few hundred lines for the base wallet and 500 lines for uh, modules. So what does it mean for DeFi? Well, what's pretty cool is that when we started integrating DeFi protocol, we basically created new modules. So our, our integration with Maker, we created a custom module that we call Maker Manager. And basically that, that module will orchestrate all that needs to be done uh, with Maker. So it's of course better for the users. As you will see, instead of having to make seven transactions with MetaMask, which can take up to 30 minutes, the user just make one transaction to the module and then the module will orchestrate all the interaction with the wallet and with Maker. It's also good in terms of security because if you orchestrate the different interaction, for example, that, that necessary approve that you need to do on a traditional dApps, when you approve 10 to the 59 tokens, well, here, the, mo the module can actually just approve the token that you need to approve. And again, so that reduce, uh, that increases security. And as you will, I will show in the end, you can start combining protocols. And for us, of course, that's why we say programmable money, is that it, you can really leverage, I mean, a, a protocol is like a, a financial protocol with open API. We didn't ask Maker, of course, we know Maker, but we didn't have to ask them if we could actually integrate Maker. 
we can build our own smart contract that integrate with Maker. And so you can start do plug and plays with different protocols that I will show in the end. So as Ithamar has asked, you know, when you open a CDP with Maker, you actually need to make seven right transaction. You need to convert your ETH to WET, approve on WET, create your CDP, join your CDP to convert your WET into PET, approve your PET, lock your PET on your CDP, and finally draw your die. So that's like seven transactions just to write. And then of course you need to make read calls to get some information. For example, what's the, the, the conversion ratio between WET and, and PET? I'm a bit lying because now today Maker has introduced proxy, so actually it is less transaction for the users, but the principle is the same. You do need to make seven transactions and interact with three different contracts. So as a user, this is not something that you, do, you wanna do. And if we think about programmable money, you can imagine these different contracts as, as Legos, Lego bricks. But if you have to interact with them individually, it's like you have Lego bricks, but they don't fit with, with each other. They're not connected. Now if you, start, if you want to do the same thing with Arjun, and this is what Itamar showed when he clicked on open my, my maker CDP, it's basically we, he made one transaction to the maker manager that started to do interaction, interact with the base wallet, interact with the different uh, maker contract, and for the user, that's one transaction. So if you put enough guys, that's like 14 seconds or 30 seconds to be confirmed, and that makes the user happy. So if you come back to that analogy of, of Lego bricks, it's like suddenly we have assembled this Lego brick to build something new. We have the Argent brick and then we have three different uh, maker bricks that we have combined to create a new block. Something new that, and uh, we think that this is of course pretty cool. Where it gets, to my opinion, even cooler is when you want to close a CDP with maker. For those that have repaid some of their debt or close the CDP, actually you need to have DAI because you need to repay your DAI, but you also need to have maker token to pay the fee to Maker. And most users don't, don't have Maker token. So if we start orchestrating all these calls in the Maker Manager, that means that we can actually swap some Ether for Maker token. And in this case, we do that with Uniswap. So in one transaction, we interact with Uniswap to get Maker token, to get DAI, and then to close your CDP. So actually, you can close the CDP on Argent, having no DAI and no Maker token, only enough ETH. And again, that makes it much uh, simpler and safer for the user. And that was the boring part. No fun stuff from Itamar again. So since we have a... Uh, uh, <laughs> since the room is way more busy, uh, you know what, I'll quickly have time to redo a demo of how I open a CDP. Sorry for so those who saw it, but I think you know, it's really cool after what Julian explained. So I will open a Maker CDP in front of you in five seconds. I've defined my collateral. I define what I want to borrow. I review my loan and I take that loan and that really takes five seconds. And while we are there, I will put some money in my compound savings account, done. Uh, and for those who weren't there, I've also sent uh, $12,000 to Ruin and my smart contract has stopped that transaction. It is the safest, simplest way to interact with, uh, with Ethereum. So, um, What's next? Um, so this what we call this native integration, like Compound, like Maker, the way we see it, we, we're not gonna integrate every dApp in the world. We see that more as core functionalities that belong to your wallet, your, um, and such as trading, investing, borrow, it's financial. You, you've, it needs to be part of your wallet. And we found amazing, rather than building it ourselves, we found amazing protocols out there and we could build these financial products for our users. Uh, we are obviously interested by this, the world of dApps out there and also outside of DeFi, and so we're working on Wallet Connect. Um, that's coming very soon, uh, and we are quite excited also of the way we are doing it. So with Arjun Wallet Connect, you will not be doing an approve of 10 to the 59th of your ERC-20. We are tackling this kind of issues, and it will also uh, work with our daily limit uh, security feature. Uh, and then we are very excited about our ramp. We are right now looking at a solution for Europe, working on solution for Europe and US, uh, especially fiat to stable coin is what we are very excited about because uh, this kind of feature you saw in Arjun is something that anyone can use. You don't need to be uh, you know, a crypto uh, addict uh, to do that. Anyone can open, uh, sa can put savings in compound uh, with that. So yeah, that's what's, what's next for Arjun. 
Um, what's next for you? Uh, if you want to have a try, you go in the App Store, in the Play Store, um, you download Arjun, there will be a wait list, you use that link, so arjun.link slash dapcon19, I think that's valid for 100 people, so 100 people will be able to access, uh, to skip the queue with that. If there's any issue, you just find us on Twitter, we'll help you, uh, or you find, and we're on Twitter at argent.hq. And we have time for questions, yeah. Uh, so, kind of on a similar topic, I guess it's with you guys. When are you guys planning on giving out more information or releasing Opera? There will be a talk at DEF CON around Hopper. Uh, so the status of Hopper, for those who don't know, it's a mixer we open sourced. So we did the smart, contra smart contract mixer for Ethereum. So Moloch DAO has financed a team uh, to uh, build the front end. So it's happening now, I'm looking if they are wrong, no. Uh, it, it's, we met them yesterday, I think they're doing good progress. They told us it will be ready by DEF CON. We are making a presentation there, so it better be ready. Uh, <laughs> so. By DEF CON, there will be a web UI uh, to use Hopper. Cool, thank you. And the uh, mobile UI is already complete, right? It's just in like a under cover thing. I would, I would say a mobile proof of concept. I don't know if you have seen it. It's literally, uh, it's just that you, there is a button where you can push on the button. It's not, a, I wouldn't call that a mobile UI. Uh, once Hopper is there, anyone, any wallet can implement it. Arjun could implement it. Anyone can, can do that, yeah. But, but the web UI will be key to get really mass adoption. You need a lot of volume for a mixer too. I you. Awesome. Cool. Other questions? What about all rounding and all fronting? Like, uh, it's really cool. Uh, to have maintenance is large to get into that. Uh, but uh, if, I, if I put money there, like you, you said that you buy the money and so on, what else, what else can you do? So uh, that's our next priority. So we are working on the US. There will be an on-ramp straight to stablecoin um, that anyone basically can use. So that's our top priority. With that, anyone will be able to open a savings account. Like, because we, we might use, at the very beginning, uh, first slide said that you want to build some Revolut in 1926. Uh, implementation of uh, blockchain, but I cannot pay with, in, in my store with not yet, but I think that's the kind of, the, the use case that are there are use cases like savings account. I think they are very compelling. Uh, the building blocks are starting to get there to do things like payment directly from crypto to big IBAN or, or adoption. I, I don't think we're too far from there, but we are really dealing with use case after, uh, use, case after use case. Have any ongoing projects with our products like With what, sorry? So, no, right now we, I don't think there's a strong compelling enough use case for payment uh, right now with crypto. People hold their assets for a long time because especially if ETH or uh, non-DAI assets, uh, but even with DAI, especially in Europe, with the spread, with the exchange fees, you will end up paying in a shop uh, and lose two, two, three percent. That's why realistically it's not yet there. There's a lot, there's more to be done before we can get there. I, I think it's over, yeah. but find us on Twitter. And to get your access, just use that link and ping me on Twitter if it doesn't work for any reason. <laughs>